Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, previous lecture was about solution to a system of linear equations, two equations with two variables. And um, we came up with the final formula, um, which uh, looks like this. So if you have a system of two linear equations, Um, we consider the matrix of coefficients we also considered the matrix which would be um, the result of replacement of coefficients at x1 with free members of the equations And also another matrix, which would be uh, the result of a replacement of coefficients at x2 with free members. And we came up with a general solution that x1 is equal to determinant of matrix A1 divided by determinant of A and x2 is determinant of A2 divided by determinant of A. I also mentioned that it's very important to look at the problems from above. So this is the view uh, on the problem of solution of this particular equation from the matrix perspective and from the perspective of determinants. And these formulas look quite general, basically. And I also mentioned that the same formulas are true for basically any system of n uh, linear equations with n variables. Now, um, I'm not going to prove the general case. However, this lecture, today's lecture, I would like to dedicate to arriving to the same results with the system of three equations with three variables. This is a little bit more tedious uh, and tiresome process than the previous lecture with two variables. It's just more calculations. And my most important goal is not to make any mistakes on the way. However, I would like actually to illustrate that solving the general system of three equations with three variables will result in exactly the same type of um, uh, solution. I think it's very important so you will feel that the generalization, the view from the matrix perspective, uh, view from the perspective of determinants of these matrix is very, very important because you are completely um, divorced from any particular uh, um, properties of any particular system, you are approaching the system uh, uh, from the general standpoint, which basically allows you to solve all the systems of linear equations with uh, linear uh, with with corresponding number of variables. And by the way, just a side issue. Obviously, the determinant of the A is uh, in the denominator, which just implies which we actually did mention before, that solution exists only if this determinant, unique solution exists only if determinant is not equal to zero. All right, so this was a preamble, and I would like to address now the system of three equations. Uh, and I would like not to lose my track and do everything correctly. So the three equations look like this. This is kind of a long distance um, competition with myself because it will be lots of calculations. Uh, just bear with me and again, consider that this is a good exercise for your mind stamina. So you have you know, the, the, the muscle stamina and there is a mind stamina. So this is to exercise your mind stamina. All right, so how can we solve this general 
system of three equations with three variables. Well, again, I assume that uh, a13 is not equal to zero because one of these uh, coefficients at x3 must be uh, non-zero, otherwise the system would not have a, a nice and unique solution if all of them are zero. So I assume that one three a13 is not equal to zero and uh, my calculations will be based on this. I will do exactly the same I did for um, uh, explaining what actually the determinant of the matrix is. So uh, I'll try to, to solve it by bas basically getting rid of uh, x3 and reducing the system to the system of two equations with two variables. Now how can I do this? Well I will multiply this by a23 multiply this by a13 and subtract and my x3 would be cancelled out. So if I will subtract from this I will subtract this, this will be 1, 3, 2, 3, and this is 2, 3, 1, 3 with x3. So it will, it, it will cancel out. Now, so what I will have, my free member will be, after the subtraction, b1 times a2, 3, minus b2 times a1, 3. b1 times 2, 3, minus b2, 1, 3. Now, my coefficient at x1 would be a11 times a23 minus 2113. That would be x1. And my coefficient at x2 will be 1223 minus 2213. That would be at x2. Now what I will do, I will similarly get rid of x3 in another pair of uh, equations, 1 and 3. So 1 I will multiply by a33, and the third equation I will multiply by a13, and subtract. From this I subtract this. So what I will have, well I will have b1 a33, minus b3 times a13 equals. Now, coefficient at x1 would be a11 a33 minus 3113. That would be at x1. And for x2 would be 1233 minus 3, 2, 1, 3. That would be x2. Now we have system of two equations with two variables, right? Now, um, instead of solving it again using some kind of a substitution, uh, I will use the results of the previous lecture. Now, on the previous lecture, I know how to solve the system of two equations with two um, variables using the determinants, right? So I can write right now what is x1 and what is x2 and then I will go about one, uh, x1, uh, x3. So, x1 is equal to determinant of what matrix? In the numerator I have to substitute the free member instead of coefficients at x1, right? So the matrix would be b1 a23 minus b2 a13. This is a free member instead of this one. But this one in the matrix of coefficients remains the same. So this element would be as it is a12, a23 minus a22, a13. And the second row would be substituting this free member instead of this, which means b1, a33, minus b3, a13. And this remains the same, a12, a33, a32, a13. Okay, that would be uh, in the numerator.
the determinant of this matrix. And what is the determinant of this matrix? Is this multiplied by this minus this multiplied by this main diagonal, and this is alternate diagonal with a minus sign. Now, on the bottom, in the denominator, I will have determinant of the matrix of coefficients, which is a11, a23, minus a21, a13, a11, a33, minus a31, a13, a12, a23, minus a22, a13, and a12, a33, minus a32, a13. That would be on the bottom. So all I have to do right now is do the multiplication and addition and whatever else, right? So let me wipe out this and I will use this space to basically do the formulas. So x1 is equal to, that would be a long line, I guess. So I have 4 and 4, I have 8 um, members. So this times this is, uh, so let me start with B, and then I will use A in the sequence of uh, increasing the row number, and with the same row I will increase the column number. So it will be B1 times A12 times A23 and times A33. Okay? Now, this and this with a minus sign. Minus B1 A13 A23 and A33. Now this one times this with a minus sign. Minus B2 A13 Now let me start with A12 because it's smaller. A12 first and then A13 and A33. And finally this times this with a plus sign. 1, 3, another 1, 3, and 3, 2. Okay. Unfortunately, I have to use the second line. All right. So we're talking about numerator only. Now with a minus sign, the product of these two. So minus sign. Okay, this times this. B1, A12, A23, and A33. Now, this times this, now this is a minus sign, but there is a minus in front of this product, so it's plus. B3, A12, A13, and A23. Now, this times this, it's a minus, but there is a minus in front of this product, so it's plus. B1, A13, A22, and A33. And finally, this times this, it's minus and minus, it's plus, but there is a minus in front of it. So it's minus B3, A13, 
another A13 and A22. So this is my denominator. By the way, uh, I wanted to cancel out something here. Right. This cancels out. That's interesting, right? The rest stays. Now let's talk about denominator. Now denominator, so let me put the line. And this is my x1 is equal. Now denominator is uh, a determinant of the matrix of the coefficients, right? So it's this times this minus this times this. All right, let's do the same thing. Uh, so it's A11, A12, A23, and A33. OK. This is this times this. A11, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3. Now times this, 1, 1, 1, 3, and this is a minus sign, 1, 1, 1, 3, 2, 3, and 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 2, okay. Now this times this, minus sign, start with A, 1, 2, a13, A21, and A33. And finally, this one and this with a plus. Uh, A13, another A13, 21, and 32. Minus. Minus product of this times this. So it's A11, A12, A23, and A33. That's for a minus. Now, this times this, now it's negative, but there is a minus in front, so it would be plus. Uh, this times this, uh, A12, A13, A23, and A31. Okay, now this times this, minus sign, but minus in front, so it would be plus A11, A13, A22 and A33. And the last one would be this time this, it's minus because it's minus minus and minus in front, so it's uh, 1, 3 would be twice. Uh, then 2, 2 and 3, 1. And Incidentally, the first two also are cancelled out. Now, what else is interesting is that all members contain uh, A13. So, I assumed in the very beginning, if you remember, that A13 is not equal to 0, because some coefficient at, uh, at the x3 should not be equal to 0. So, I can just reduce it. So, A13 here goes out. Here goes out, here goes out, 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 out. That's my numerator. Now denominator, cancel, 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 and cancel. So what's the result? So I take the liberty to wipe out this because 
If I made a mistake, well, I made a mistake. So be it. Um, so let's try to uh, rewrite this thing. x1 is equal to. OK, let me first collect all the pluses. So the pluses are this, this, and this. And I will put it in a proper order. b1, a22, a33, plus b2. I will order by b. Um, a13, a32. And the third one, b3, a12, a23. Now with a minus sign. b1 with a minus sign. b1, 2, 3, 3, 3. Now b2 with a minus sign is this one. a1, 2. A three three and B three with a minus sign. One three two two. Okay, that's my numerator. My denominator, okay, uh, again pluses. This plus one one, let's arrange it by the first one. A two two A three three plus one three and plus one two so let's do it plus one two first a two three a three one and one three now with the minus sign minus a one one two three three two minus a12, a21, a33, and minus a13. Okay, so this is the answer for x1. Now I would like to check if my initial statement that all the uh, linear systems basically can be solved using the determinant Let's just check my, my rule. My rule was that if I have a matrix of coordinates, uh, sorry, coefficients for this particular equation, and matrix looks like A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, a31, A32, A33. Then in, in the denominator, I will have the determinant of this matrix. Well, let's just see. Determinant of the matrix 3 by 3 um, is very easily uh, uh, can be constructed by multiplying first the main diagonal, which is this one. And then two triangles with a short side parallel to it. This one, A1, 2, 3, 3, 1. And this one, also side parallel to the main diagonal, which is A3, 2, 1, and 3, 2. Now, the negative members are correspondingly with the alternate diagonal. So this is my alternate diagonal, which is uh, 1, 3, 2, 2, 3, 1, 1, 3, 2, 2, 3, 1, and two triangles here, here, with a short side parallel to alternate diagonal, which is 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, and this one, which is 1, 2, 2, 1, and 3, 3. So as you see, at the bottom, we do have determinant of the A matrix of coefficients. Now, how about the top? Well, you remember that, again, the rule was take the free members, which are B1, B2, B3, 
and substitute instead of the coefficients at x1. So let's substitute. So that would be b1, b2, and b3. And this is called matrix A1, not A11, A1. Well, let's see what's the uh, determinant of this thing. Main diagonal, B1, A22, A33. Then, the triangle with a parallel. Um, now, the triangle with, okay, this triangle, right? With this side. So it's B2, A13, and A32. B2, A1, A32. And another triangle, this one which is B3, A2, A12, and A2, and A2, B3, A12, and A2, So all the positive members, negative members, minus. So the main diagonal, which is B3, A2, and A13. B3, A2, and A13. And uh, with a minus sign should be this B2, A12, and A32, A33, A B2 and A12, A33, correct? And this triangle, B1, A23, A32, B1, A23, A32, uh, so B1, okay, this is my mistake. No, yeah, 33 is here, so this is supposed to be, this is supposed to be 32, I'm sorry. All right, so, um, Basically, as I was saying, um, the formula is very much similar to the one which we obtained for the 2 by 2 matrix and two equations with two variables. So, my purpose was to basically go through the same calculations to come up with the same result, not without a small mistake, I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, but but any case, this is just an illustrative lecture that the rules, the laws of these matrix manipulations are the same regardless of whether it's two-dimensional, three-dimensional, etc. This is, again, the illustration of how the generalized view on the problem helps you to solve not just one problem which you have, but many other problems. So not only the system of two equations with two, two variables you can solve, but you can solve the system of 10 equations with, with 10 variables. The problem is it's kind of a tedious. And obviously, these systems with 10 whatever number of equations are solved by computers because computers are, well, that's what they're good for, basically. Stupidly make calculations uh, as, long as, they do, uh, as long as they know how, as long as we program them correspondingly. But that's easy. All right. So thanks very much for listening to me and bearing through all these tedious calculations. Again, let me remind you that this is the development of your brain stamina, your mind stamina. Stamina. You really have to be able to do something which is tedious because, you know, the real life unfortunately requires this every once in a while. Um, uh, I, I do suggest you to go to unizor.com to the lecture about matrices and the solution for 3x3. Three, three, three three. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure that I did not make a mistake similar to this one on the website. So among notes, everything seem, seems to be fine. Just follow the calculations and again, try to, to develop your patience, if you wish. Patience and precision to do these type of things. That's a very good qualities for, for the real life. Um, all right, thanks very much and good luck.